Hello friends and today we shall go in the practical demo of BCA, how to really apply to new data set and we will be working with the breast cancer risk concern data set which we've already done before and today I will be quickly walking you through this data set so just uh, be with me and I'll be a little fast here. I have loaded the data set and the data set looks like this in a variable called df and as you can see that it has got 33 columns and when I show you the shape of this data set it looks like it has got 569 columns and 33 569 rows and 33 columns so now uh, if I explain PCA a little bit here it means that these 33 columns would be reduced into the number of components which I will specify either 2, 3, 4 which we shall see how we will be determining that and these rows 569 will remain constant okay let's see how it works so now uh, these are the certain statistical tools and the calculation which we've done before i'll provide the link in the description box and also in the end of the video you can just check through the thumbnail um, this data set is for predicting whether the data or the patient is having a malignant or a benign tumor benign means it is not dangerous and malignant means it is a dangerous tumor and here you mean that uh, 212 cases are for malignant and 357 for benign. And then we've done some data visualization, preparing the data set. Now, uh, before using PCA, I will drop this column of ID and the unnamed column 32, which was there. So I am remaining with 31 columns. And this, since this diagnosis is MN, MNB, I will uh, map it into one and the row just to make it easier but I will be dropping this uh, diagnosis when I'll be applying PCA because I do not need a dependent variable I only need independent variables now what I do is I will quickly take you through PCA and before that let us understand this correlation because it is important here so this correlation map shows you the correlation how positively and negatively the variables are related among each other so we see this here this this box as you can see this shows me high correlation among variables like compactness mean, concavity mean, and the concave point mean. As you can see, that there is a high correlation. Similarly, um, I can go down and show you that the worst means, concave, concavity, and uh, this thing, are again having high correlation. So previously, what we did was we removed removed these variables, these columns. But now we will not remove it, we will reduce it into PCA with the help of PCA into very few components. So let's see how it is done. And even in the uh, theory class of the PCA, we have understood that how these correlation affect the data set, that it, it uh, does not lead to generalized prediction. Right? So this was the pair plot and everything we did to reduce the correlation, to fit transform data and to predict by using various uh, machine learning algorithms. Now we will quickly go on to PCA because that is the main objective of this video and I'll walk you through this. So before this what you do is in X and Y you store your independent variables and on Y you store your dependent variable diagnosis. And uh, in PCA we have seen that you have to standardize this data set and then you have to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and then you have to arrange it in descending order. This is what we follow. So what I do is I will import the standard scalar and from standard scalar I, you can see I have created an object and I have fitted my x in this and transformed the x. Then you find the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix it is having a, a formula for itself and calculation so that is a statist statistical part of it. But NumPy makes life easy for us by calculating covariance matrix in really very in, in, in just a blink of an eye. And this is the formula for that, that NP dot co covariation and I fit my X standard deviation here and transpose it. And this is what um, this looks like. And if you've gone through the matrix calculation or you're from maths, maths or statistical background, you would know that how does this matrix calculation and transpose and multiplication really work. And if not, then please um, just have a look. It is not that difficult, but you would understand that, yes, this is the matrix and how, how is it multiplying all these variables and giving you this kind of a matrix. So this is what the covariance matrix is. And now if you want to really, you know, find, a, find similarity between covariance and correlation matrix, what you do is just check these diagonals of 
the variables. It is 1 and you check this in the second array, you check this, this 1, this matrix. You check third element here, 1. Again, you check this element here, 1. So it is just incrementing in a diagonal fashion, which we have also seen in the correlation matrix. And this is the covariance one. Now you scroll down, you will get all the 31 variables here. Okay. And I'll just simply close this. Now, what I do is I would uh, come to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So now we have to, since we've got the covariance matrix on this, we will perform eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now vectors will be determined the direction of all these, all these uh, values and values will determine the magnitude. So what I do is in covariance matrix, I will put this in an object. I will place my covariance matrix and eigenvalue and eigenvectors. I will apply this formula. I will apply this method, this thing, uh, linear algebra dot eigenvalue co covariance matrix, right? So it will perform this. Uh, it will bring me, it will give me eigenvectors and eigenvalues of it. So when I print it, I will get the eigenvectors. You can see the eigenvectors of all these metrics for this matrix, which will determine the direction and the values. When you scroll down more, you would find the values. So these are the values for these 31 features which we have and these they will determine the magnitude or the variance which is the data covering and capturing and telling me so when i want to plot them in descending order i will write it here like i will arrange them and i have used for loop here so you can see this that this has been arranged in in, uh, in a descending order and you can find that the first three values the first three values are or you can say five and six are covering maximum of the variance and we, we shall be that means that we can use three or four or five components which can easily determine the variance of this data set right comfortably so let's see whether it really works or not so i will plot this pre-plot here to understand how the components and variance are linked and uh, uh, what you do is you have to import pca from sql and decomposition so you import that and then you plot this pre-plot and this is the screen plot and here what we do is that uh, you print this uh, explained variance ratio okay and uh, when i'm plotting this explained variance ratio that means how many number of components are explaining what amount of what uh, what uh, amount of the variance so if you just map this five that means it is somewhat explaining like more than 70 percent of the variance if you take 10 components it is explaining more than uh, I mean, 90% of the variance as you can map it, right? So it depends upon you how many vari how many components you want to take, either five components or ten components or less than five components. This is what it has plotted and shown me. So this is how you plot this is pre-plot. Then what you do is you can just uh, print this escape uh, explained variance ratio. This explained variance ratio is being plotted here also, but I want to see the exact values of it, so I print it. And I've used this PCA five components I've used so that I can just see how many, how much variance has been explained by the five components. So the first component itself is explaining me 0.44% of the variance. The second explains 0.189, third 0.093, and so on. So when you add them up, you would find that nearly 82% of the variance has been explained by first five components. And I don't have to take much components. I can settle down on five or four if I, because it is a quite a, Good amount to understand the variance of the data set. You can see the shape of your data. You see this, but the rows remain the same. That is five, six, nine, and only columns are five. So that means all the old columns, 31 columns, are being reduced to just five. And how PC is doing it, we don't know because this is a drawback. How is it combining all these things in the back end? I don't know how is it doing it. Now you come to the components of it. You print the PC components, and this is like um, will get all the components on the five components and we put it in this array form and you can see it go ahead and you would find these three one number two you can see this three this four and this five components containing all the features right these are the PCA components on which will be they will be working and this is a new data set okay with values now I have just plotted a scatter plot to show you the principal component one and two and how is it uh, classifying the diagnosis part of it. 
So you just can see that the first principal component is plotted on the x-axis and on y-axis you've got second principal component and this is the scatter plot which shows the malignant of the benign tumor with the help of PCA two components okay and these are the data points of various uh, various uh, uh, data which we have in, the point, uh, in our data set okay and another thing I'll just take it a little further if you want to fit this model into linear regression I will just uh, show you how to uh, plot a uh, uh, convert it into a data frame so that things become easier for you so this using this PCA you can you can transform this PCA again you can use any number of features here I'm using three you can take four five two then you fit and transform it and what you do is in a pandas data frame take this object again make a new object PCA M and in a in this pandas data frame what you do is you take a date take your data as this X PCA which is the fit and transform data set okay Sorry, your X data set and in columns, since I've taken three principal components, I will take three columns, principal one, two, and three. And then I print the shape of it, and this is 569 rows and three columns. So I'm working with a new data set, completely new data set, with the same old 31 values, but being compressed or reduced into all these three columns. Let us see how. And this is what my data set looks like when I print the first, you know, three. First uh, five values by this thing, you can just go ahead and see PCA underscore M dot uh, tail of it. And let's see what it gives me. Okay, so you've got this 568, 569 rows and three columns. You can go ahead with all pandas um, exploration and uh, data analysis with this and fit it into a model for yourself how, how this principal component is different from linear regression and machine learning models and uh, this was the PCA you can apply it on large data set and this was the basic understanding of uh, how does PCA how to apply how to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors covariance matrix correlation matrix how to read them and how to really work with PCA so I hope you would uh, be benefited from this video and stay tuned for more upcoming informative videos and thanks for watching